Hey, I'm Amanda Brinkman, and I'm the Chief Brand Officer at Deluxe and the host of the show you're about to watch. So Deluxe started doing this series because we love small businesses. It's not just that they create jobs. We believe they have the power to bring people together. And we wanted to use what we do at Deluxe to help them succeed. Our hope has always been that entrepreneurs can watch a show and learn something that helps. But the episodes are only a half an hour long, and we can't always show you every step of the process. So if you want to learn a little more, come check us out at deluxe.com slash revolution. Your town doesn't have to win the half a million dollar makeover for the deluxe team to work with your business. What we do on the show is what we do all the time for five and a half million small businesses across the country. We just don't always bring cameras. So remember to shop local and enjoy the show. All right, so this is a big morning. Oh my gosh, and we're about to go in and surprise Amelia and Josie. They own Savor and Sip, an incredible coffee shop and crepery here in Searcy. And I think they're getting married soon, right? They are, and we're about to go in and surprise them, and we hope that this is potentially the second biggest moment of their year. Let's hope so. Uh, was- Congratulations! Oh. Welcome to the revolution! <laughs> Clearly crepes, is their thing. Can we yeah. try our hand at actually making a crepe? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Plop it on there. Okay. Grab your spinner, and then as soon as you can, just start spinning it around. Oh, oh that no. is, that is a... Um, that's pretty decent for a first one, actually. It? Yeah, yeah. He's like, but that's, is it really? That's decent? But is it? <laughs> that looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, oh, perfect. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> Guys, you're welcome. Table three, that's on us. <laughs> Crepes are up. All right, your turn. All right, so. Ooh. Oh, that's oh, really oh, hard you know, job. You know, I'm, I'm making an amoeba. Okay, that's it. I give up on this. This is all just a load of crap. <laughs> Small towns across the country are fighting for their survival with the odds stacked against them. But what happens if we join that fight? If we dedicate a little money, a lot of experience, and thousands of hours of work into one small town, focusing on the businesses at the heart of their Main Street. What started as an idea became a national movement with over 30,000 towns nominated for the $500,000 makeover and more than a million votes cast for the winner. Hello, Cersei! In its fourth season, the small business revolution is headed south to Searcy, Arkansas, and a new town in a new region will present a fresh set of challenges to tackle, both for the small businesses and for the community as a whole. So Amanda Brinkman and her team of marketing experts at Deluxe are going to work, and they're not alone. Renovation expert and co-host Ty Pennington will be working with the team to rehabilitate the town's buildings, while a whole cast of experts help rehabilitate its businesses. Every episode, we'll be working with a new small business to see if we can change the odds, if together we can start a revolution. I've always wanted to be a small business owner. Like my parents have always been small business owners. I love coffee. I love cooking for people and making them feel taken care of and well-fed. I brought it to my parents and they were like, actually, we just bought a building downtown that could be really perfect for it. I said, all right, like, I guess we're opening a business then. Going into it, I was like, all right, you can be the owner and I want to be the manager because I always wanted to make a good, healthy place for people to work in. And I think that was always my goal. We tried really hard to make a really comfortable environment. And I think we've succeeded in being a place where people feel like they can come in, sit down for like six hours. I just don't think that there's anything else in Cersei like Saber and Zip. It's a great place to hang out with your friends. It's a good place to come and work, but I've also been here for date night with my husband. All of those things are okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's like a home away from home for me here because I can come here after work and just decompress and see people that know me and they always want to know what's going on in my life, how my nephews are doing. It's really nice to have that like friendly feeling with everybody that comes in and be able to like call them by name and know what their drink is. Like, oh yeah, that's Mason. He gets the strawberry Nutella crepe. Like I'll start making that right now as he's walking up to the counter. I think that connection is like the biggest thing that we aim for. So she's from Canada, uh, Winnipeg, and I'm from here. We met at a supernatural convention in Minneapolis, like yeah. nerdy stuff. 
our respective groups of friends were standing in line next to each other. No. Nope. No? Nope. Never mind. I'm wrong. <laughs> we were actually all in the lobby of the hotel that we were all staying in. Yeah. And we just like kind of casually like started talking and then became friends. Yada yada yada. And now we're getting married on May 4th. When she came up with like the whole idea of savor and sip and she said, hey, like, let's start this in Cersei and like in the south in Arkansas. I, to be honest, was completely terrified. I thought there would be people harassing me on the street, especially for me being like as open as I am. I was definitely very nervous. When we first opened, we're like, we have to be very aware that we are in like a very conservative Christian town and we might be turning away some people. You know, if they find out the owners are gay, they might not want to come here or support us. But I do have to say, I have been really pleasantly surprised with Cersei. People that we have perceived would be standoffish or non-accepting or just not kind to us have been very, very kind. But it's not Portland, it's not Austin. When we were talking about this small business yeah. revolution, we were like, we don't ever like closet ourselves. Um, but not just, everybody. But not, we're not bro literally broadcasting it. We haven't yet. I don't want to be out there screaming from the rooftops like, hey, like, guess what? We're gay because we're just normal business owners. At the same time, I just don't want to hide. We're about to hit summer, which is our slowest time by quite a bit. We're at a point now where we're going to need to make some changes to stay in business. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes people don't know about that we're struggling with. I can't even count on my hands the number of people that have come in and said, wow, like, we're so happy that you got picked, but, like, what do you need help with? And, like, I'm immediately like, oh, fridges, oh, plumbing, oh, marketing. It's just kind of, like, a lot. So, like, past few months, we've been like, what would really happen? Like, yeah. this we goes down. Especially with me being Canadian, going through the whole immigration process. Because we moved down here to start it. Like, we didn't move down here to just live in Cersei, Arkansas. We poured so many hours of literal sweat and tears into this for what? To end up with a huge amount of debt. I think if the business were to close tomorrow or next week or next month, I would be mostly just distraught about our staff. Like, I love them to death. They're so important to me. And same with our customers, because I've grown like so dependent on, you know, seeing them every day. Like, oh man, like I wonder when Robert's gonna come in and get his tea. It would be breaking that family apart. Small businesses are often so much more than they seem, created with a greater purpose than just turning a profit, holding more significance to their community than simply filling a need. But these are the two youngest business owners we've ever worked with, and they're the first to admit that they have a lot to learn. Who else would we bring in to help mentor them through the process but four-year small business revolution veteran, Kim Barton, owner and operator of nine acclaimed restaurants across Minneapolis. They have an entrance here, and a sign, but a lot of a people come sign. in through the back door. I don't know if people know that they're here. Is it a coffee shop? Well, I think it's cool that they have local art and are supporting another small business, but it could maybe read more neat. <gasps> Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. I have Kim Bartman with me. Yay. Hello. Yeah. Hi, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice. Good morning. We'll do the crossword. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. All right. Good to see you. OK, let's show her around. All right. Cool. All right, the grand tour. Here we are. So this is our dining area. We've got our coffee bar right here. So it's a whole self-serve coffee bar that we do. And then we've got all of our counter space up here. We make all of our crepes right over there. They make both sweet and savory crepes. Yes. We've got our kitchen back here. Here we are, where it really happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are you guys doing soups? We do soup. We do soup of the day, usually. Um, weekdays, that is. And gathering clues. Mm -hmm. So our only prepared food storage is right under where Josie's leaning. OK. Um, I wanted to see the name on this bag, because they're buying everything retail. Oh, lordy, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. The biggest reason is we have um, residential fridges that we kind of bought last minute when okay. we opened. Margins in the restaurant business are tough already, let alone if you are paying retail pricing for those raw materials and that won't be sustainable. We go through at least 10 gallons of milk a day, and yeah. as you can tell, we really so only have So mostly what you're doing at Walmart is getting milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's going on with the nitro taps over here? I could use a little caffeine right about now. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. All right, to save your mistake. I think the space is really cool. Coffee, crepes. What's more to love? More to love. <laughs> Got it all. 
Yeah. So let me ask you this. Are your offerings consistent? Like if I come here on a Saturday afternoon or at night or whatever it is, like, can I expect what I'm going to get or does it change a lot? Our menu boards in the dining room are not really consistent. Our desserts, we kind of have like an assortment depending on the day. Her dad does a lot of the baking, so on the, like, it depends on the day, but um, mm -hmm. it's just kind of what he's feeling like making. Your menu has to be one of the most reliable pieces mm -hmm. for two reasons, customer experience, so they know what to expect when they come in, and then two, from a financial perspective, then you can start modeling out where am I making the most money. And three, when you're changing things all the time and doing it by a whim, you're wasting a lot of food. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you are. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You mentioned your dad. It's awesome when a family member is giving of their time to help you, yeah. but I would hate for that to be the reason that you can't meet customer demand yeah. because you don't want to ask too much of a yeah. family member. What is his involvement in the business? And He does a lot of the financials. So All of okay, so do you guys get together and look at the financials on any kind of regular basis? Mm -hmm. No. Which yeah, yes, no, we definitely um, feel that. <laughs> all right, you can't run your business without doing that. And this comes from a person who does not like finances, I do not like looking at numbers, etc. But I can tell you off the top of my head, you know, what the monthly sales are, how much we're spending on labor, what we're spending on food. Those are the three big numbers that you need to yeah. look at. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay. At this stage, you're operating a little bit more like you're a manager, yeah, right? And you own this place. Do you think you made money last year or lost money? I have no idea. I think we may have broken even. You lost $31,000. Yeah. It makes me so scared for you to be an owner in a business that you don't have not only the visibility into this, but the control over where the money is going. Like, I hate, I hate, I hate being in this situation. But the thing is, I don't have a lot of experience. And so I think it is scary for both of my parents to kind of like let go of the reins of that. But I think I could be really good <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're literally in a restaurant 101 situation here. To not know that you just lost $30,000. And I think that reality is hard to hear, but there is a difference between working at a coffee shop and owning a coffee shop. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. When you say working on the business, not in the business. Definitely feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. In the next couple weeks, we have to file immigration papers. We're getting married in exactly a month from today. But at the same time, I'm really hopeful about how we're going to be able to make progress. Yeah, we're really excited to see what they can teach us, both yeah. Amanda and I. Navigating the intersection of family and business is delicate work. But helping small businesses get a grasp on their financials isn't new to us. It's one of the many aspects of Saver and Sif's business we're going to need to tackle, each requiring legwork and funding. So back at Deluxe headquarters in Minneapolis, we need to lay out a plan and budget to get this business on steady ground. Let's talk about Saver and Sip. The place actually looks pretty good. As far as the transformations go, I mean, we can do a little bit of cosmetic work, but it feels like we're gonna have some money left over. Mm -hmm. But then we also need to kind of grow the business too. And I think that's where marketing will really help. So I think we reserve some of those dollars for helping them with even just local advertising because they have a little bit of a cash flow issue as well. So <laughs> they're they losing seem, money. They, they do seem to have a little bit of a problem. Uh, yeah. yeah, so we're gonna sit down with Amelia and Josie and kind of go through the finances. Yes, absolutely. And one of the big things I'm concerned about is their food cost. Like we've got to get that's them commercial right. kitchen equipment, yes. right? Like commercial yeah. fridges. They yeah. need to stop buying products at retail. It's yeah, it's stuff. not only inefficient because yeah. they're spending so much time running to refill, yeah. but it's killing their margins. Totally. So I feel like we have a good to-do list for them. I'm okay. excited. We've got a plan. And while Josie and Amelia spend a few days taking care of some important business back in Searcy, the team at Deluxe is getting to work. How are Saver and Sip listed on Google? They're listed as a crepe brew. Yeah. So can we change that for you? Yep. So we also talked to them about branded merchandise. This is either for the employees to wear or to sell as a second income stream as well. Before we get too far down the road on anything, we need Amelia and Josie. So we're flying them out to Minneapolis to meet with the team at the Lux. We are at the airport about to head to Minneapolis for the week and could not be more excited. It's going to be a busy week, a crash course on marketing, operations, and finances, all guided by experts in every field. Restaurant 101. When you walk through the doors of Saver and Sip, you are transported to some like cool trending city. I mean, who has a crepery in a town of 23,000? 
So we need to get them out in the community, meaning talk about those amazing crepes, get their name out there. We're starting in the creative lab where the marketing team at Deluxe has their sights set on boosting revenue by getting more people in the door. Where we should really start is that Amelia and Josie have gotten married. Yay! Yay! We're gonna start it with champagne, but it is <laughs> 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. No, it was. Was. So congratulations. Thank you so much. We're, so happy We're really, for you. really Thanks. excited for you guys. Okay, we feel like you guys are doing a good job with marketing. So we're gonna work on things that drive traffic, specifically to Saber and Sip, and then traffic that is capitalizing on existing foot traffic and people around. Are there places in town where you wish you were showing up more? Not necessarily online, but offline. Like the center on the square, they do like plays and stuff downtown. Um, we've talked about doing advertising with mm -hmm. them so that like people know that they can come after because we're open late. What are the types of things that you would want people to know about Savor and Sip? What stories do you want to tell? And who do yeah. you want to tell them to? From the start, we wanted to make sure it was like just a very relaxing, good environment to kind of hang out for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Emphasizing the comfort of being there, the fact that all the food is homemade, and because it's homemade, it's worth the wait. Thinking through how you want to address the needs of people that are looking for somewhere to hang out is how you start planning your content strategy. There's like hundreds of people just working on us. It's really, really cool to see. It's been really nice to have people who actually know what all of the doing. details yeah. and they know what they're yeah. doing tell us. Hey, it's gonna be okay. This process is usually a mixture of unconditional support and tough love. Small business isn't very forgiving, so avoiding hard truths ultimately just amounts to feeling more pain later. And as far as we know, Josie and Amelia are still in the dark about their finances. So we're sitting down with Damon Fieldgate, one of Deluxe's financial experts, to talk about the numbers. The first observation I have is that your margins on your food are nowhere near enough. Okay. Um, they should be around the 70 to 75 percent mark in order for you to actually make a profit out of selling that food. Because when you take your operating expenses into account, you're actually making a loss on that food. Okay. And you're doing a really nice volume and your sales are growing, which is terrific as well. I'm worried that your volume will continue to grow and it won't drive the bottom line because you have your cost structures wrong. In order for you to be effective business owners, you need the visibility into how the business is operating. Without the visibility into what's happening in the business from a financial standpoint, you cannot make the decisions in your business that you need to make to change it. No. Well, you're not the only business out there that probably feels trapped by their gratitude for who has either helped them start the business or has helped them have the capital for it, and then you feel beholden to that person's influence or control or decisions within the business. But your, your faces and names are on this business. And if it keeps going this way, we're not being dramatic. Like you will be out of business. In a, you should have been out of business last year. Let's talk about how we've kind of gotten here. I think we need to be really honest about it. So like, So right now your dad is running the books, mm -hmm. right? Why do you think your dad won't let you actually run the business? He said, well, you haven't proved yourself yet. One of the accesses to like control is knowledge. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be a great investment of time for you to take some kind of basic accounting classes and just kind of have an understanding of where the numbers are at. I think that course would help a lot, yeah. You're smart, savvy people, your coffee is great, the environment is fantastic, like you can do this, but the only way you can do it is if you know these numbers. That kind of message is so hard to deliver, but we wouldn't be doing it if we thought Amelia and Josie couldn't handle it. We believe in what they've built together. So back in Searcy, Ty and the Deluxe team are looking for creative ways to build it even better. With the interior already looking so sharp, we get to focus on the small things, details that business owners stop noticing because they see them every day, but in the end can add up to a big difference in customer experience. And honestly, like, they've already got a pretty good look inside, but I think there's definitely some upgrades that could happen. They can have a little bit of a warmer feel if they just change out these bulbs. And like, I think, be able to display even more, it would be even better. Yeah, I mean, they got a great countertop, but then just little things, you know, the grab and go type of things. They, they need some more display for that. What I love about Saber and Sip is their visual appeal is already on point. You know, walk into a space and realize you don't have to redo everything. What they need help with is some functionality to make sure that they can keep growing their business. One thing Deluxe can really do is, is get them a commercial grade walk in freezer, or fridge, and it'll save them so much time during the day. And then we have to make the signage a lot more clear about what you're coming into. We are so invested in Amelia and Josie and what they're trying to build, and we want people to continue to love them for who they are. And so we will do everything in our power 
to continue the Savor and Sip legacy that just started a year ago. While Savor and Sip is under construction, Jonesy and Amelia are making one last stop in the Twin Cities, heading to Tiny Diner to absorb some restaurant knowledge from one of the best in the business. Hey. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Tiny Diner. Yeah. Want to see the bar? Yes, yes definitely. definitely. This is our tiny dining room. It's cute. I love it. Let me show you our tiny kitchen. As you might imagine, we don't do a lot of baking here. We do mostly breakfast, lunch, and dinner. First, of course, you want to design for what people want, but you also need to design your menu for efficiency. We have very few menu items that have a single-use ingredient in them. You'll see that there's a lot of cross utilization of items. Do you serve all of this all day then? During the week? Yep, all okay. of these things seven okay. days a week. Could have sat there for like yeah. another hour I and a half and I could like have asked her questions. Kept asking more questions all day yeah. long. Yeah. It was very helpful. She had a lot of good insight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like seeing all the ways that everything is different, but the ways that everything is also similar. It was really eye opening for us, yeah. I think. Yeah. Watching Amelia and Josie go through this process, I've only grown more confident in their ability to turn this business around. They're good partners. They complement each other well. And through all the highs and lows and hard conversations they've experienced over the last few months, they've always managed to stay on the same team. It's fun to watch. It's also really good for the business. So as the team at Deluxe wraps up their last few weeks of work, and Josie and Amelia tried to expand their knowledge of how the business functions, I'm feeling optimistic. And I can't wait to get back to Cersei for our final visit to Savor and Sip. Well, the new sign looks great. It looks you, awesome. You know that they're here. Savor and Sip, there it is. Window clings. That's exciting. Hey! Hey, guys! Hey. Hey. How's it going? How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. How do you like the lights? I love them! Right? What a new light yeah. bulbs. Yeah. Yes. They're so much cozier than the other ones yeah. were. It does add a warmth to it. It is interesting, but just a simple light bulb change can do. Yeah, and I love I love the enlarged sign on the on the glass. Yeah, it looks it really, really like jumps out. It stands shape. out a lot. Yeah. Good. Check out our menus. Oh, look at that. An updated, right. accurate menu board. Yeah. So it's been a lot easier. Honestly, just like talking to customers about how they're ordering coffee and stuff. It's been great. And we love this bakery case. Yeah, it's so cool. But the one big thing. Can we see that new walk-in cooler? Oh, yeah, that's big. Thing big. Yeah, this is this is very big. I love it. This just it's arrived last big. night, just yeah. in yeah. time. It's brand yeah. new. It's very big. This will make such a big difference in terms of the quantities you're able to order. We stood in here last night going, wow, look how many jugs of milk we can yeah. fit in here. We're like, <laughs> one, two, three, four, <laughs> counting all of them. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. All right, so let's talk about marketing. So uh, first of all, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to get their butts in this in these stores. What do you always say, butts and seats? Butts and seats. Butts yeah. and seats. <laughs> you guys have really done a great job with your site. So we just want to lend our expertise to helping you make it even that much better. So first of all, kudos for claiming your Google listing. But when you search for coffee shops in Searcy, Arkansas, right now you're 15th on the list. And the reason for that is because your description wasn't coffee shop. And so we fixed that for you right away. Just listing Saver and Sip as a coffee shop shot their Google ranking up seven places. And we were also able to address some of the website details that are easy for small business owners to miss and important for a customer's experience. Right now, your address isn't clickable, so someone would have to try and highlight the address, pull it out, and put it into a map app. It, looks, <laughs> it does look so much better, yeah. That was really nice to have like an expert go in and be like, hey, we like changed how your Google listing is gonna show up because like the, it pulls these different words from your first page, and I was like, what? I'm a millennial, and I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I should know, but I don't. At least the website. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys have done a really good job of collecting email addresses. And so we designed an email for you. It's so cute. Like, doesn't <laughs> so this just cute. look like a whole different level yeah. of a, of a so brand? Cute. Social media, email marketing, these can be really important ways to continue to grow your business. One of the best ways to kind of go about that plan of attack is to actually um, sit down and put together a calendar. And we have done that for you through 2020. So, okay. cool. wow. wow. We want to walk you through how we put it together. You guys, can examples. I get a copy of the social media strategy? <laughs> <laughs> we'll you <laughs> Maintaining a consistent social media presence can feel overwhelming for businesses. And it's not just the work, so much as it is the stress of wondering what to post and when. A social calendar takes the uncertainty out of the equation. Drawing a roadmap not just for the date and time, but for what kind of content will resonate the most. You'd rather you post 
consistently and stick with something rather than trying something feverishly and then not doing it at all. Put it in your schedule. Yeah, yeah. So your photography is incredible. The one thing we would definitely recommend though is, is if there's a way to try and get your logo in images as well. We all spend a lot of time thinking about social media trends. So it's easy to forget that sometimes more traditional marketing can be just as effective, especially for targeting local customers who are already downtown. So Center on the Square is a local theater. So Deluxe has purchased for you a sponsorship oh, that's in so cool. the 2019, that's really cool. 2020 awesome. season. So as a presenting sponsor, you'll get your logo on the sponsor show poster, full page ad. That's awesome. Okay, can I show you what your logo looks like on some swag? Yes. All right, why don't you toss it for those hats, right? Oh, I love it. All right, I so we know that you love hats. snapbacks, right? So now you have branded <laughs> snapbacks. This is me, this is me. This is so you. When you sell cool swag, your customers will actually pay you to go out and advertise for your business. And when you are a coffee shop, Branded cups are the best way to get your logo walking all around town. Menu for you, ma'am. Menu for you, ma'am. We carried that branding over to the new menus, which thanks to Josie and Amelia's work with Kim, were both more streamlined and more consistent. Very it's intentional. Very professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we so did it good. again, Kim. Yay! Woo! <laughs> they look so good. It's so rewarding getting to share our team's hard work with Josie and Amelia. The deluxe folks have really come to believe in what they have built. But along with that unconditional support, comes a tough look. So it's time to address the elephant in the room. So um, the first time I was here, we talked about how you weren't seeing all your financials or engaging with your financials. What's happening now? Have you guys changed that at all? Or um, Amelia's dad has let us take over that aspect. Mostly we're just kind of like trying to sort through everything and figure out our way of doing things. But at the same time, it's kind of nice because then we get to figure everything out. And then once we figure this it is, out, like... This is what you wanted. This is what yes. we were yeah. advising yeah. you. You need to have to truly be the owner. Yeah. You finally yeah. do have ownership of your business because you're running the financials. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, great. it's like terrifying right now, but we're like, if we can make it through like the next two months, like this then will we'll, be, we'll then figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's just making yeah. it until it's just making <laughs> I mean, this is, but this is what we've been working toward. This has been a big year for you guys, right? Yeah. You've been going through this process with us and really kind of learning the fundamentals of running your business and marketing your business and growing your business. And then the most exciting thing is that you guys got married and we're so excited and happy for you and this beautiful life that you're building together. I hope you don't mind, but we noticed that you guys had a GoFundMe page out there to help cover the legal expenses for starting the immigration process. We just wanted to go ahead and um, help you meet your goal. So here's a check for $3,374 wow. to that's awesome. help you meet your legal need. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's gonna make such a difference. Yeah. We got to see something unique in our time with Amelia and Josie. We didn't merely witness the maturation of Saver and Sip as a business. We saw two young entrepreneurs empower themselves to take control and then embrace what it takes to run a business. That's such an honest reflection of who they are as people. Strong-willed, but eager to learn. Passionate, but open-minded. Resolute, but ready to change. These women have been tested before and it's given them strength beyond their years. They serve as an example to the town of Searcy in so many inspiring ways. One of our staff approached us and was like, somebody left a note for you guys. And I open it up and it's a card from an anonymous person saying that they are an LGBT person in Searcy. They've just recently like started to come to terms with that and it's been really hard for them because they're Christian and Searcy is not necessarily as accepting as we would like them to be. In the letter it said that whenever they come here it feels like they're at home and they feel like they can be themselves. That's not what we started out to do when we opened a coffee shop. Yeah, that I just like, wanted to be a business owner. I wasn't yeah. wanting to be a gay business. But I mentioned to Josie later, I was like, man, if someone went out of their way to write this letter, like how many other people are out there that are feeling the same way, it can be the default to feel unsafe. And I think no matter what anyone's personal beliefs are, I think most people would agree that no one should actually feel unsafe. Just being open to people and making them feel that they're welcome yeah. and that they're safe here to just be who they are. Yeah. If that's something that we are being without even meaning to, I want to go out of our way to be that. Small business owners, whether they know it or not, are role models. Whether it's students at Harding that don't feel like they can be who they are and are feeling unaccepted, unloved. Here's this couple in the middle of Arkansas 
putting their faces out there and trying to create something special for the people in town. I, you know, I'm older than them, and I grew up in a time where I was closeted for a long time, and it's tough. I just admire them for being who they are and being very courageous. Ready to see big results from an email marketing plan like Saver and Sip? Deluxe helps thousands of small businesses solve their biggest marketing challenges every day. Visit deluxe.com slash revolution to connect with our experts. On the season finale of Small Business Revolution. Hello, Cersei! Deluxe gets to work rebranding an entire town. Everyone's really planting that flag about how Cersei wants to be seen moving forward. And this will be the biggest challenge they've taken on this season. We all want to succeed. The revolution happens by everybody stepping forward. Watch the town of Searcy, Arkansas come together one last time on the next episode of Small Business Revolution Main Street.